Welcome to This Is My Ride, Bike Stories with Argon 18 and their podcast. My name is Eric Hill, and I'll be your host today. I am the president of the veterans nonprofit Project Echelon and the team director of the elite domestic cycling team, Project Echelon Racing. My guest today will be Aaron Hunnell, and we're going to be talking to you about our efforts on the ride to stop suicide. So have a good listen. We're starting now. But first, I want to tell you a little bit more about my experience with Argon 18 and why I love this company. They're small, but they're powerful. They put out amazing products and they listen to their customers. We couldn't be more proud to be a sponsored team by Argon 18 and to have their help in our ride to stop suicide efforts. So with that, today I'm so happy to interview uh, my friend and veteran, actually active duty member, Aaron Hunnell. Aaron, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're excited to be here today? Uh, first off, Eric and Argon18, thanks so much for having me. Um, I am super excited to be here today. A little bit about me. I'm a military veteran, um, have almost uh, 17 years of service. I got into endurance racing about 10 years ago um, when I did my first marathon when I was in Iraq. Uh, it was a terrible experience. I vowed never to do it again. I got home um, in 2010 and I had an opportunity to go to the Boston marathon. Um, and that really was like the, um, that was the, the, the beginning for me where I realized that endurance racing became a tool in my toolbox for helping me pursue like a sense of purpose and, um, get camaraderie and feel like I was part of a team. And so, um, after running marathons, I realized that I wanted to do a little bit more and I got into triathlons and I did an Ironman in 2014, um, where a friend and I helped an athlete who was differently abled, um, get through Ironman Wisconsin. And then, uh, we also teamed up again in 2016 to do a hundred mile run. So I love adventures. I love endurance racing. And again, I'm super excited to be here today to talk about, uh, like as a veteran, how um, we can come together as a team, uh, even with Project Echelon here and through Argon 18 uh, to ride to stop suicide. So thanks for having me, Eric. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I want to give a little bit of background on the Project Echelon organization for those of you that, that don't know. Uh, Project Echelon was founded in 2016 um, in collaboration between myself and veteran friend Eric Beach. Uh, Eric Beach uh, had a similar story to, to Aaron um, where he found physical activity to be a tool to help him get out of his cycle of self-harm, suicidal ideation, um, and addiction, addiction to drugs and alcohol. Um, it allowed him to be a better father, to be a better community member, um, and to explore his passions in a deeper way. Uh, Eric didn't have the tools that he needed in order to achieve those goals of completing a marathon or completing um, a, a triathlon, which is really what got him started and what got us talking. Um, luckily enough, as elite athletes, we often have these opportunities to be connected with industry partners like Argon 18 or Cask Helmets or Reynolds Wheels or what have you. And they open doors for us. But there's so many people that need these tools uh, to just lead better lives. And uh, I found it compelling and necessary to uh, use my network to help empower him to achieve those goals. And it changed his life in such a way that we decided together that we had to make this same opportunity available to more people. In our first year, we supported 12 veterans. In 2020, we supported 207 and donated over $35,000. In 2021, um, thanks to the servant leadership of our members, people like Aaron Hunnell, um, we have goals like the ride to stop suicide and donating 100 Argon 18 bicycles to veterans in need on Veterans Day in 2021. All right, so one of the things that's interesting about what you just shared, Aaron, and I didn't know this, was that um, you got into endurance sport through running, which is funny because 
one of the jokes that we have is if you're an elite cyclist, chances are that you were an injured runner. Um, <laughs> and that is, that is my story as well. Um, but so you were, you're overseas and you decide that you're going to run a, a marathon of all, of all things. And I'm guessing that you had to do it on a base as well. Yeah. Like, tell me more about that and where that crazy idea came from. Yeah, actually, uh, my friend April asked me if I wanted to do this marathon um, on our base that was coming up in like four or five months. And growing up, running was punishment for me. So the thought of like running that far for fun um, was like, no, like I'm absolutely not going to do this marathon. And then she was like, oh, you get a T-shirt and, and a medal at the end. And I was like, oh, uh, a T-shirt and a medal like. I want that, like sign me up. So I signed up for that marathon, not really knowing what I was getting myself into. And uh, um, one of the things that I, I've uh, taken away from that experience is that you just, you learn new things when you're practicing and, and planning and preparing. And I realized that I did not know much going into marathon running. And so um, like, for example, when we showed up for race day, I, um, I went like guns a blazing, like, you know, if you were to put it on a intensity scale, like I was like nine out of 10, um, going as hard as I could, uh, with the 350 other runners on base running that marathon. And I was in third place for the first three miles. And I was like, man, I'm doing well. Like I might actually place, but little did I know that that's not sustainable. Right. Cause I just didn't know much about endurance, like how my body worked and, and, uh, you know, endurance athletics. So, um, I actually hit the proverbial wall at mile eight. I was going way too hard. So, you know, like do the math there. Like there's a long way left to go, like eight miles in hitting the wall. I got like, I was wearing cotton, right? (laughs) Um, I got like blisters in places. I didn't know I could get blisters and I felt like quitting. I felt like giving up. And I gave myself two options to either quit or just to keep going no matter how fast, just like, even if it's slow, just keep moving forward. And that became my mantra for the rest of that race. And ultimately, um, like now it's like a mantra that I live by is like, you know, just find a way to keep moving forward. So I crossed that finish line, uh, at like four and a half hours and I felt like I was going to die, but I was like, you know, I finished and I'm never going to do this again. But sometimes life has uh, something in store for you that you don't have planned for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the Boston Athletic Association invited me to come to the Boston Marathon as an honorary for Patriots Day the following year. And it's where I got to see running as not like a punishment, which is what it had been for me for so long. It was an opportunity to create purpose through achieving goals and then a sense of community. Like there's nothing more empowering to me than towing the line or like, I haven't raced like a bike per se. Um, but like just being part of a race with other people trying to get to the same finish line, like Mm -hmm. they have the same goal, but they're coming at it from different perspectives. And like the thought of that just like energizes me. So I, I, I get purpose and a sense of community by being part of endurance athletics. It's, it's a community, like, you know, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I love a couple of things you said. One, like that goal of just keep moving forward. Uh, I just, it reminds me of our name itself, Project Echelon. And people ask, like, what what does that name mean? And anybody that races a, a bike, rides a bike, would know that an echelon is something that you form when the wind is blowing to uh, to share the work, right? So that the group can keep on moving forward faster. And that's how we view our organization as an echelon, uh, sharing the work to ensure that everybody can move forward, regardless of the pace towards their goals, um, in person towards personal growth. Um, and so that that's just, I mean, that's a, a humbling story, a great story, and it aligns with, with our mission, um, extremely well. And then, like you said, you know, people ask as well, like why, uh, why a cycling team and a veterans nonprofit, like what's the connection there? Um, you know, endurance sport, sport in general, uh, but endurance sport, especially the community that's behind it, um, the sense of accomplishment that you get, the opportunity for personal growth that it provides is like anything else that, you know, that we experience. Um, And one of the things that was really inspiring about you that got me really excited to to connect with you and bring you into the Project Echelon organization uh, was one of your 
first like delves into into Iron Man, and so you you just you spoke to it earlier um, about how you helped somebody who is differently abled uh, to complete Iron Man Wisconsin. Um, let's talk about that. Like, what was that experience like? What was going through your head? How did it make you feel at the end? How did it how did it help that other person? And um, how did it lead you to Project Echelon? Well, it the overall Iron Man experience. Um, brought like two big things for me. Um, it brought friendship. So some of my best friends are uh, people that were part of that team, whether they were racing. Um, so like my friend, Adam, who's another able-bodied athlete, we work together to push and pull our friend, Katie. Um, both of those two are like great friends for me. Um, Christian, the executive director for my team, Triumph, uh, is another great friend. And then we had like 20 people supporting us that day. And, uh, you know, we really just um, came together through that struggle and we developed a unique bond and, and friendship, not just through Ironman Wisconsin, but even in preparation leading up for it, you know. So for me, like endurance training, um, it makes you vulnerable. And through that vulnerability, um, you get connection. Like that's the byproduct. So um, that's one of the things that I really took away from the, the, the Ironman experience leading up to, and then even the event itself. Um, and then, you know, I realized for myself that, uh, you know, there was a lot more potential like within me. And so, you know, I, I figured like maybe I had limited myself in ways and maybe anybody listening to this or watching this video, or y even you can relate, Eric, like sometimes we, we kind of get in our own way, like we limit our potential and, and going through that Ironman experience, it kind of like elevated like the bar within myself of like, you know, maybe, maybe there's something to this teamwork, you know, maybe there's something mm -hmm. through to this connection and, and endurance racing and the feeling of, of, of like connection that, and, and, and relationships that you get with people that just make life meaningful. And so like, I just felt, you know, kind of like a body buzz of, of, the experience where through that connection, through like having great friendship, like those are memories and experiences that we get to talk about, you know, as friends for the rest of our lives. And I also get to use it as data to like reinforce like Aaron, like you're more capable than you might realize. So mm -hmm. keep like raising the bar for yourself and let's see where you land. So like for, uh, for, for Iron Man. Um, one of the stories that stands out to me is um, when we were about, so we're like 15 and a half hours into this race, right? So we're- Which is funny we're, already. 15 and yeah. a half hours. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's already funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're 15 and a half hours away from, or we're 15 and a half hours into the race. So we're we're down the finisher shoot, like getting ready to, to go. And it's like 200 meters with the um, capital in the background in Madison, Wisconsin. So, you know, we're exhausted and we're tired. And um, my friend Christian, the executive director for, for my team, Triumph, asked me and Adam, like, do you, and even Katie, they're like, like do you guys want to walk this finish? It's like, it's 200, you know, meters. We're like, well, we're pretty tired. And, and you know, we, we haven't trained for this, but we're like, you know what? Like, metaphorically speaking, we've been like arm in arm, like gritting this out in preparation for this event. And even during the race for this day, so we're like, we're going to give this a shot. We're going to try to walk Katie arm in arm down the finisher shoot. And uh, as we're getting ready to take Katie out, this volunteer comes up and's like, hey, you know what? She shouldn't do this. You all are really tired. You know, this is a far walk. And Katie um, just looked up at her, put her hand on her shoulder and said, like, it's OK. I'm going to do this with my willpower. And, you know, that made me like really emotional. And I was like, OK, like we're going to get this. We're going to grit this out. So we pick Katie up and we literally walk arm in arm. I shouldn't even say walk. Like we're trudging. Like we are going like turtle snail pace down the finisher shoot. And, um, people are like cheering. They're crying. We're like, you know, just so exhausted. And we cross that finishers line at 15 hours and 39 minutes. And Mike Riley is like, Katie Newman, you're an Iron Man. And we put Katie down in the chair after that exhausting nine minute trudge. And she looks up at Adam and I, and she said, that's the farthest I've ever walked in my life. And 
that was very powerful for me <laughs> because that was a new experience for her. That was something that like we didn't even plan for, but like there was meaning and connection created from that experience. One that we wouldn't have had access to if we didn't challenge ourselves. So as endurance athletes, you know, I think it's really important to find that sense of community and purpose uh, and connection with each other, because through that we get meaning, we get data to like keep pushing the status quo on ourselves and together. Yeah. And and like you said earlier, it's, it's a tool that allows us to open our minds and our hearts to have conversations that otherwise we might not have. And um, using, using cycling, using endurance sport in general as a tool uh, to learn more about our veteran community and to quite frankly, learn more about myself or the other athlete mentors that we have on our team to learn more about themselves has been has been absolutely incredible um, and is why this is such a a powerful organization. And I mean, we're, we're just thrilled to have, have you be, uh, you know, a part of it. And so one of the the ways that you first got involved with us then was taking those experiences. um, And you were just so inspired that, I mean, you really couldn't even help yourself, but to say, I'm going to do more. Like I need, (laughs) I need to kind of like Eric Beach and I did, we need to create this experience for more people. Um, and so you turned around and you're like, Eric, I I need to do a 24 hour ride. Like, and I'm going to raise funds, uh, for, for the organization and for my team triumph. And we're going to call it the ride to stop suicide. So like, let's, let's talk about that and how you kind of came to be with, uh, the project echelon organization. Then we can talk about the exciting stuff that we have coming up that we're doing together. Yeah. I, I had, uh, been familiar with project echelon, um, through some friends of mine and, I, uh, was leading a, um, I was leading a course for the military and one of the individuals in that course, um, so th- I'm responsible for these 30 individuals. One of the individuals almost took their life and it was, uh, a wake up call for me because that hadn't happened before as a leader, as a veteran, as a leader, as a person, And so I felt a little bit afraid, like, because I didn't know how to handle the situation as best as I could. Um, I've, I have a background in health promotion and wellness and behavior change. And this was unlike anything I did, I'd encountered before. So luckily we were able to um, help this person get support that they needed. And then this individual asked me, if they wanted, if I wanted to know why they didn't take their life while they were attending this course. And I said, sure, tell me. And they said, I didn't tell, I didn't take my life. I didn't kill myself because I didn't want to disappoint you. And it made me feel like this really heavy feeling like there was this weight on my shoulders. And I asked myself, you know, am I strong enough to carry this weight, to carry this load? And I was like, I reflected and I just sat in that for a moment. I'm like, you know what? Heck yeah. Like I, I am because I'm connected that this is what life is all about. It's through this connection that life has meaning. Right. And so connection acts as the buffer to, um, improve our mental health and to, uh, like keep off thoughts of suicide. We need connection. And so, that kind of became the Kickstarter for me because I was like, am I doing enough as a leader, as a person to stop or reduce suicide in the veteran community, which it's no secret, right? I mean, like people know, like this has been around for a while, like veteran suicide is a problem. And so after that experience, um, veter- like stopping, reducing veteran suicide, like went to the top of my list. And I was like, how can we come together and create a movement to reduce veteran suicide. And that's where the ride to stop suicide was originally born. And project echelon just like popped like into my brain. And I'm like, I got to reach out to this Eric guy that I I've heard so many great things about and, and just like run something past him and, and see what happens. And so you and I spoke and, um, we, uh, we decided that, um, partnering up would be a great idea because a bike is such a powerful metaphor when it comes to like our mental health. Mm -hmm. And, uh, there's, there's two things that come to mind when you talk about biking. And and the first thing is that in order for a bike to move forward, you have to pedal it, right? 
So the bike doesn't move forward unless you put in effort and en- unless you put in energy, right? And I think it's like life, right? If you don't put energy or effort into your life, you're probably not going to move forward or move in the direction that you want. And which brings me to my second point with this metaphor is that a bike only goes in the direction that you steer it. So uh, I think that's also true for life. Like your life goes in the direction that you, you choose to go. And so you have to metaphorically speaking, um, take your life like the bike and put energy effort. Like you have to pedal to move yourself forward, but then you also have to grab those handlebars for your life and steer yourself in the direction that you want to go. And so the ride to stop suicide is really about creating a movement. And Mm -hmm. um, that's what I think project echelon does such a great job of is, is um, empowering veterans through cycling to move forward and get connection, take control of their life and move forward and steer themselves in a direction that they want to go. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, a hundred percent true. And, um, that that's why we've built the program the way that, that we did. So for those of you that, that don't know, we, um, we have an elite cycling team that races on the pro road tour, um, a hundred percent committed to competing at, at the highest level. And Argon absolutely helps us to do that. Um, but one of our major motivators is using our success and our opportunity to travel from community to community and meet with race promoters and community leaders and business leaders is to be able to share this story and talk about the power of what Aaron just shared with you so that we can get more veterans involved in this physical activity journey um, so that they can experience it and experience the benefits of it for themselves. And when they do, uh, we work with them to coach and mentor, uh, to provide training plans, to help with goal setting through a smart goal setting process and to connect them with our partners um, to ensure that they are, that we're removing barriers to access for them. Because unfortunately access and knowledge are probably two of the greatest barriers that exist when it comes to getting involved in endurance sport. Hence your first marathon you ever ran um, and the experience that that you had. And so we know that we need to to remove those barriers and the Ride to Stop Suicide is our major effort here in 2021 to do that. And it's uh, the effort is to to get a hundred veterans on Argon 18 Gallium CS discs. So talk about where did this crazy idea come from a crazy awesome idea come from and <laughs> yeah no and you're what not is wrong the fr- there yeah and what and what is the framework for it like what what is the ride to stop suicide yeah so um you you touched on it earlier but this idea was born through um one of my team triumphs events called uh, road america 12 and so um in our initial effort to ride to stop suicide, I was just going to bike while pulling an empty trailer, that empty trailer being symbolic of suicide, putting some uh, really big American flags on both of the different chairs. Let's talk about cre- that really quick. Yeah, that <laughs> which was cre- terrible tons idea. of drag. Yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a terrible, awesome idea <laughs> because I felt like so patriotic. But I also felt like I wasn't going anywhere. Which you weren't going anywhere. You're doing 300 was, watts going 12 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, man. Like, it was crazy because I remember. because so, so the Road America 12, uh, which is a 12-hour endurance event um, that starts at 7 p.m. and you go to 7 a.m., uh, which there were a lot of lessons that I got for myself by being part of that. But, um, yeah, like, I remember going down the steepest downhill, which had a sharp left-hand turn at the end. The fastest I ever got on that um, on that Road America route because it's a race car track, it's a four four mile loop, um, was twenty miles an hour pedaling as hard as I could downhill. So just uh, yeah, an su- indication of the track. You could get close to fifty probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So that event um, really made me learn a lot about myself and uh, how somebody who's having thoughts of suicide or even poor mental health. Um, they might be experiencing their thoughts their and their feelings. So um, when I started this event at 7 p.m., you know, the, the sun was setting and it was about to get dark, right? So you think about someone who's having thoughts of suicide, like they might be in a good place. And then all of a sudden that metaphorical sun sets in their life and things start to get very dark, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm pedaling and um, I've got this drag, things are dark. I've got this very small light trying to, you know, light the way. It's hard to see um, the path and the road that I'm, I'm supposed to stay on. 
and everybody's just like flying by me. And I'm not, I'm not an elite cyclist. You know, I consider myself like an average cyclist, but I like to put in the work and, you know, I'm pretty like mentally strong, Mm -hmm. but everybody's passing me and I've got these negative thoughts. Like I, I should be going faster, right? Like this is like so difficult. Like what in the world am I doing here? Like I am just like struggling. And basically what was happening was all of my sense of security, the things that made me feel secure, like they were just getting stripped away. Right. And so I, while I'm in this thought of like, I should be going faster. It made me think about somebody who's having thoughts of suicide. Like they see other people having success or being positive or enjoying life, having friends. And they think to themselves, I should be that, that like them, Mm -hmm. you know, they put a lot of pressure on themselves to not be where they're at. And, you know, to, to flip the script, um, on those thoughts, both from somebody who's having thoughts of suicide or like even being in the middle of this 12 hour endurance ride is like to just accept, appreciate and embrace where you are, because there's going to be something that you learn about yourself, something that's a tool that you can use to cultivate purpose, passion and connection in life. And so I flipped the script on my thinking right then and there. And I'm like, this is what this experience is all about. This is the reason Mm. that I asked for Project Echelon and you, Eric, to support this ride to stop suicide because um, life isn't always sunshine and rainbows. There's times where life gets hard, where the light, you know, goes out and the sun sets and we have to be gritty enough to, to keep moving forward, however fast or slow we're going, because it's about getting, um, it's about moving forward until the sun rises. And so while I'm in this event um, with all these other athletes going on this four mile route, you know, eventually the sun rises and, you know, it's beautiful. And that's what it was for me is like, I, I was able to grit it out as hard as it was. And I had some, I had some destructive thoughts for myself, but I was able to grit it out um, until that sunrise. And I was like, I felt like this sense of appreciation and beauty for that experience. And that became a new lesson, a a new tool for my toolbox about, you know, appreciating the struggle, the hard times, because it's going to give you access to better times Mm -hmm. ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that story. And I know that you're not alone in those thoughts and those feelings. I mean, even at the top level of the sport, the most elite athletes in the world, like those are thoughts that go through their head and they have to go through training, sometimes seek counseling, get support in order to learn to over overcome those. Um, But putting ourselves in that situation, you know, on a bike and learning those lessons in a non threatening scenario situation Mm -hmm. can help us to address and overcome that same scenario in other parts of our life in a more serious situation. Um, but yeah, I, I I know that for myself, like at at the end of a race, like I'm cramping, I'm dying. Um, like I'm getting chased by 150 angry dudes, like thinking about our veterans and how important this mission is, is what keeps me going. Um, and knowing that we are helping them to see the next sunrise. Um, that is motivation enough to, to make a difference. Um, and so talk about like, how did we go from 24 hour, you know, let's raise some money to, all right, now I'm going to ride across the country and we're going to, we're going to raise enough money to donate a hundred bikes. Yeah. So one of the lessons that I learned, um, from that road America event was struggle leads to strength. And it made me think of the word compassion, right? Compassion. So I said that a little awkwardly at first because there's two words in compassion, calm and passion. So you segment those two words, take take them apart. Calm means with or together. Passion means to struggle. So you put those two things, those two words together and you create a framework for struggling together. And to me, that's what compassion is all about. Mm. And so for the, the ride to stop suicide, um, the, the, the mantra is compassion. It's not like just me going from coast to coast from, uh, Oceanside, California to Annapolis, Maryland. This is about other giving other veterans access to tools in the form of like bikes Um, so that we can challenge each other together. Because one of the things that I've learned as a service member, as a military veteran, is that when you put that uniform on, like you get a sense of purpose. Um, And then 
uh, when you put that uniform on with other people, you feel a, a sense of connection. So you, you feel like you're part of a team. And when you leave military service or when you come back from a deployment, um, those two things can vanish and that can be really tough on people. And so one of the things that Project Echelon does really well and what the Ride to Stop Suicide is really meant to do is to uh, reestablish that sense of purpose and connection. So um, the the bike is meant to give is, is meant to be a tool um, to to take on a new mission of life. Right. So you get that purpose by getting that bike. And then you get to be part of a team. And so it really aligns nicely with what the military does, where you feel a sense of purpose and you feel a sense of connection. This ride to stop suicide, it's not about biking uh, across the country. It's empowering other people, bringing communities together, bringing businesses together, bringing veteran organizations Mm -hmm. together. Because the only way that we solve this suicide problem is not alone, right? Staying alone is what keeps us stuck it's together. Like we have to come together as a team. We have to create purpose together as a team. So from the road America 12 to the ride to stop suicide, biking coast to coast and donating 100 bikes, the, the mission is uh, life and we're just trying to make an impact by coming together as a team. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we know that for every single person that receives one of those gallium disc bikes, um, it's going to impact their life in a, in a different way. Um, and that might be being more effective in the workplace. That might be being a better dad. That might be taking care of themselves um, and, and having more compassion for themselves um, than, than they did before. Um, so what is your biggest hope from this project? I mean, putting a lot of time, energy resources, building amazing networks of support. Um, I know that we're not just going to give away a hundred bikes and call it a day. What, yeah. What's, yeah. you know, what's next? What is, what is our hope for these men and women that receive this amazing tool? The great thing about tools is that they help people take action to solve problems. And so veteran suicide is a problem. And the only way to solve problems is with tools. So the, the goal here isn't just to raise awareness, right? Awareness is great um, in like theory, but we need more. We need action. The only way to make a difference, to start a movement is with action. So what I'm hoping through this is to create a movement of action to show veterans and other people that we need to leverage tools um, and and come together as as a team to help improve uh, our veterans' mental health. Mm-hmm. So at the end of this, um, like I'm not just wanting awareness. I want um, veterans to get these bikes and feel like they have a tool to solve their problems that they might have coming up in life. Because now, after they start riding and they feel like part of a team, they feel more purpose in life. Like you said before, you get energy, purpose, hope, those are transferable skills. You start feeling hope in one area of your life that can carry over into a whole nother, uh, domain or, or domains of your, of your life. It can impact your work. It can impact your relationship with your spouse. It can impact your relationship with your kids. It can make you more, uh, like it can increase desire to help in your community. Like the benefits are endless and they're exponential as well. So that's why we're trying to create a teamwork and a movement here, like a movement with one person doesn't go far. This isn't just about giving away a hundred bikes. It's about creating connection and a movement to keep people moving forward in their mental health with purpose through connection. Yeah, no, I I love that. It's it's about building a community of support. And, you know, one of my hopes is that, um, you know, at, as, as we race um, and travel the country is that people see Project Echelon um, not as a, a team of top end athletes, but see it as an organization that is building their community and is providing resources to people in meaningful ways. And that people would come up to us, um, shake our hand and engage in authentic conversation to learn more and to see how they can get involved and to see how they can be a part of that solution. Because like you said, in isolation, we can't do that alone. Um, And so how can 
people get involved? How can they become a part of uh, this success story um, and be a part of that solution? Yeah, there's a few ways that you can get get involved. First way is uh, you can go out to our social media pages like the Ride to Stop Suicide, like Project Echelon. Um, this will give you an opportunity to stay up to speed with everything that's going on. Um, the second way that you can get involved is help us make connections with um, people that can help make an impact. So if that's you, awesome. If you know somebody that's part of like a veteran organization or um, is is active in the community um, or is part of a corporation that might be, be able to support this effort, I would love to get connected with them and uh, collaborate. Because again, um, a lot of the effort that we've made so far and uh, we've raised, uh, so our goal is to raise $150,000 um, right now we're, uh, I just crunched the numbers this morning. We're at about, um, 25, uh, with getting just under 23 bikes right now. So, um, if you have some connections, uh, or some ideas about how we can collaborate together to, um, keep this movement going forward, uh, would love to have conversation, get introduced to some people that you might know. So thank you for that. Yeah. And, um, the bike is the tool through which we're doing this. So I have to know. Um, you know, and we have to thank Argon 18 for, for giving us this amazing opportunity to empower people in this way. Um, what is your dream Argon 18 bicycle? If you could ride any one of their machines for your ride across America for the ride to stop suicide, what would it be? Help, <laughs> help me out here, Eric. Um, I, because... There's so many options, right? <laughs> I mean, the question is, do you want to go fast, fast or faster? Uh, yeah, <laughs> there, I, I forget the name of their endurance bike. Um, so you might have to help me out on that one, but the endurance bike, I think would be the, the dream bike to, um, They're, tackle this, uh, ride to stop suicide coast to coast the Krypton, the Krypton. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one Be beautiful bike, all roads. Um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a beautiful machine. Mine is sitting in my basement. It's the nitrogen, uh, nitrogen disc. Uh, amazing racing machine, but it, it does all things that, that we need. Um, and I couldn't be more thankful that we um, were brought together by our passion and love for endurance sport and cycling, and that uh, we were given this opportunity today to talk shop, share some stories, uh, but really share the important mission of Project Echelon to educate, equip, and empower veterans through physical activity um, and specifically through the Ride to Stop Suicide. So we would love if you would give us a follow on Instagram and Facebook, Project Echelon Racing, um, and Ride to Stop Suicide. Um, follow our story, help us build this network, and help be a solution to the veteran suicide problem that we are facing. Thank you.